Hey guys, I am in the midst of building a couple necks. I've got a, a coffee can guitar to build for an artist that I've referenced numerous times on this channel. Um, they're out of Long Beach and um, let's see if you can figure out where they're at. Plus I've got a license plate guitar kit that I've been talking about. Let me put that out of the way here. Um, it's a little bit different than the ones you've seen before. Uh, anyway, I'm going to put one of these together and tell you about it and kind of make a comparison the good, the bad, and the ugly. Anyway, so I've got these necks to make, and I'm at a point where I've done the headstock, uh, the scarf joint, put my dowels in, and now um, I'm going to mark out uh, for respectively whether it's a coffee can or a cigar box what I need to route down out of this part right here. Uh, once that's done, then I'm going to glue this on. And I've already figured out about where it's going to go there. I've got uh, the body of the cigar or the uh, license plate uh, body marked off here. And I've got this end cut off here to do something with. And it dawned on me, you know, Every time I lay out a guitar, one of the things I need to measure is where the middle of the neck is. I also have got um, spots that I need to determine where the dowels go and that kind of thing. And I thought, you know what, it's time I'm going to show you one of my little tricks. We're going to take this piece of wood right here, this cutoff, and we're going to make a handy little um, uh, template that you can use over and over because how many times have you done something and went you know what if I had all that time back on all the guitars I built if I just had something where I could just do the layout a lot faster it saves you a lot of time and uh, it makes the hobby much more enjoyable I do want to point out the background music today comes from Margaret Garrett this just came out a couple of days ago it's um Margaret playing the Skies After Guitar, I'm going to give you a link to that episode right up here, but she did a live solo recording. I'm going to give you a link to that, a Bandcamp link down below. Help Margaret out, uh, buy the album, uh, download it, and then let's see what we can do when it comes out on uh, CD or album. But Margaret's always been there for me. Um, she's done a lot to promote my guitar. So once again, check the link below. While we're talking about that, always at the end of the video, give me a like, subscribe if you haven't, hit the notification button. At the end of the week when my newest video comes out, uh, you'll get a notification. Um, and let's get to the workbench. This is gonna be a handy little trick and it's not gonna take too long to make. Okay guys, let's start here. Um, what this is really about is our neck uh, wood that we use as, as a standard size. So let's call out the metric haters right away in this episode now they call this two by two inch well it's not really two inches it's an inch and a half and if i wanted to find the center of this three quarters of an inch is right there this is probably the easiest example of using inches that i've ever seen now when you start getting into whatever this measurement might be here between here and here and you get all these little marks and sixteenths and thirty seconds and sixty fourths it becomes a little bit more difficult which is why I use the metric system. But anyway, just remember, this is inch and a half with three quarters being the center line. Or, let's flip this around. It's 38 millimeters, which means 19 is the center point. So, 38 mm, 19 being the center point. Blow that up and remember it And here. Let me autograph this for my favorite metric hater. Here, let me put the year 19 on it, right? By the way, this is the uh, inside neck board that uh, come off uh, the inside of the Moxie guitar um, when we did the redo, and that episode is right about there, right now. Anyway, moving right along. Every time we glue something or dowel something or put a headstock on or something, we always got to find the center. Now, you'll see up here, let me move this down a little bit within range. There we go. There's a center mark right there. That's pretty easy to find because this has a center mark. So I just line this up and draw a center mark there. Now, 
when it comes to lining up wood for scarf joints and everything you can see that there's a center mark there there's a center mark there uh, there would be a center mark here uh, for putting this dowel in I need to know where these dowels go turning this over without knocking the camera down we got the same thing here we got a center mark here a center mark here and even a center mark here and here that have been sanded off so there is a bazillion center marks everywhere and now when we want to start thinking about gluing this one on the bottom of this neck board we're going to need to know where the center is here we're going to need to know where the center is here and we're going to need to know where everything is in relation to these dowels so again what this looks like and you all have done this is okay i got to turn that around because it's going this way okay there's 19 da 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 that one's okay i flip it over and we're flipping this all over uh trying to measure the center so we're going to take this piece of wood again left over from the moxie guitar and we're going to make a little um template that allows us to do these center points like super quick let's go to the chop saw okay the first thing I want to tell you about a chop saw is this gap right here. That's where the blade goes. The blade doesn't go over here because if it was, this black piece wouldn't be here. So we can make some assumptions. And these are real simple assumptions that if we want to cut a 45 in this piece of wood, that as long as the end of our wood, a bit of it is over that line right there, that it will be a true 45 if we try to figure out where this is going to go here we might end up with not a true cut so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take and lay my blade over for a 45 like so now we're going to be careful because this is a short piece of wood and i don't want my fingers cut off and i'm going to end up with something about this long so watch me here I'm going to, again, make sure that the end of it is over that line right there. And that will give me a full 45. So let's cut this. Let me do this in another shot so you don't have to listen to it. Okay, there we go. So now, what I want to end up with is I want to end up with another 45 running right here on a piece of wood that's about this long now what I could do is I could come in from this way and do that or I can just turn this one over and again knowing that the blade is not going to cut here I simply put that there like so I don't want to cut my own autograph because that would ruin the value of this on the Antiques Roadshow later on. But I'm going to move that forward like so. Start to drop this down, make sure my fingers are out of the way. We want to end up with something that looks just like that. Now I'm going to take this to a belt sander and knock this down a little bit. But the one thing I do need to make sure is that this and this are straight, that they're not all crooked. All right, there we go. Still got a little bit of that moxie paint on there from memory. And notice my autograph is perfectly intact. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this for one of the last times we're going to use this for a neck. We're going to lay it on here. We're going to make sure the end is where it needs to be. And we're going to find the 19 mark there and we're going to flip it around and do the same thing right there now while i'm here i'm also going to find 10 millimeters in from here and 10 millimeters in from here okay do the same thing over here i've got get that right to the edge i got 10 from there and 10 from there you can't see it but trust me now we're going to take our short uh, square our small square 
and I'm going to line it up where that center line is there. There. I'm going to put a mark there and one there. Then I'm going to take the 10 millimeter mark that's on the edge on this side and come down here. Let's just draw that one all the way through. And we will do the same thing over here. Got those two marks lined up width of a pencil. Okay. So I've got my center mark there, 10 millimeters off the edge here, 10 millimeters off the edge here. Now I'm going to take my flush cut saw. I'm going to very carefully line up. I'm going to find that center mark. I'm going to put this right on the edge and cut myself a spot right there. I'm going to turn around, do the same thing over here. It's really important that you get this notch cut right like so. And then I'm going to do the same thing for each of my 10 millimeter marks. You don't need to see me cut them all, but... Well, maybe you do. I want to make sure you know. We got one more right there, and I don't want to cut my fingers off doing this, but... Starting to jump. Okay. Center. 10 millimeters off the edge. 10 millimeters off the edge this way. Same thing here. Now I'm going to turn this over, look, center, 10 in, 10 in, same thing over here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go where this drop down is, and it says it's 54. So if I find the middle of that, hey, figure out how many 130 seconds that is. Well, guess what? It's 27, so the center is right here, and I know that this is... 19. Look at that. I was right on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Forstner bit. I'm going to be very careful because this is a short piece of wood. But I'm going to drill all the way through this. All right. What's that for? To hang on a pegboard like that. Okay. Now let's see how this thing works from a practical sense. I've got this part, which is going to be the second board at the heel right behind about the 15th fret. Now, this is the same size as this. I lay this on here like so, and I've got my mark right there for the center. See it? Now, that's where if I want to put my dowel to go there, or maybe I can put it here, I just take my pencil, make that mark. I can slide this thing and make the mark. Now I come down my other two holes here, or about 10 millimeters in, I just make my mark there. And I just make my mark there. Let me turn this around so we got a better camera angle. Slide this back a little bit. But you can see here that just simply by putting my fingers here like this and lining this up, I know I'm in the center right there. I can slide this down like this. And then my other two marks for my triangle pattern. I just simply do this. When it comes to laying out necks, I want to find where my holes go for my tension pins. There's my center. I can line the neck up there simply by doing this, depending on where my lines are here. I've got a line to run there. I could also make one of these depending on what my hole pattern is. If I want to put a three string in, and this is my tail piece, I can put this one here like so, and then I just slide these down out of the way. And my other two holes are here. If I wanted to make one for a four string, I could probably do it on the other end of this. Of course, I wouldn't be using the middle on a four string. It would be probably about three mil millimeters, three and a half millimeters off there. And then over here and over here. But 
this is a really handy way to do this. I didn't have to turn anything around um, and have a big long, I'm trying to snake this through the, the camera tripod here so we can see, let's do that. See, same thing here. I can turn this this way. I can put a center mark there. I can put a center mark there. My dowels are there, there, and there. Easy money. Make one of these. It takes literally five minutes. There it is in the camera. Five minutes. I don't know what that is in metric time. All right, so we took a piece of scrap mistake out of the Moxie guitar and made something very valuable out of it. So did you make one of these yet? What are you waiting on? Hello. Um, now that I've subliminally branded your brain with my pins and stickers, is that not the coolest logo you ever saw? Hey, Tim Lohman, graphic artist, musician, uh, trash, blues, guitarist, you're the best man. Now, once again, that music in the background, let me zoom in on the phone. Let's see what we got in the background. Don't pay attention to the reflection. But that is, yeah, I need a manicure, but I'm not that type of person. Margaret Garrett live at Charles River Museum of Industry. All of the songs on this six record, six track, whatever you want to call it, uh, collection is played, are played. I'm getting so much better with my vocabulary. Are played on the Sky Zephyr Guitar Box Guitar. So I'm going to give you a link below and give me a like and I will see you next time. Good job, Margaret.